When you begin your CNC journey, you need to know what to bring along. End mills are the business end of cutting materials and bringing your designs to life. Why you want these five, what you can create with them, and some practical advice next. End mill number one, a quarter inch flat end mill. This is your workhorse. Three flutes on that quarter inch diameter. These flutes run upward towards the spindle. It pulls up on your stock very similar to a drill bit. Put it through wood, plastic, or metal. Pocketing, facing, and contour cutouts are the typical areas of assignment. The 201 by Carbide 3D, which is included with every shape Oko for a reason, can cover a ton of CNC ground. When you want to test how a material cuts, rough in a 3D project, or quickly cut a profile around a shape, use the 201. It's versatile and durable. You definitely have to have a few of these around your shop. Your second cutter, a 1 8 inch flat upcut. Again, an upcut end mill. Same useful characteristics as the 201, but in a thinner profile. This cutter is super handy for small details, small text creation, detailed cutouts. The 102 is effective in the same wood, plastic, and metal projects. Has two flutes on it, and it is a must-have from the start. No discussion of end mills is complete without worrying about feeds and speeds. What do I do? How do they affect it? Oh my goodness! The reality is this. Feeds and speeds are incredibly variable. Depends on a lot of different factors. Wood species, age, moisture level, machine architecture, spindle type, cutting forces, overall stock depth, and more always apply. Don't let this intimidate you. The machine will move, the bit will cut, and in most cases, you'll end up with a usable part, a win. Refining speeds and feeds comes from experience. At Carbide 3D, we're gonna give you a baseline from which to go on. The best thing to do is to make stuff, so go do that. All right, back to end mills. Two basics in our drawer, what's next? The answer, a V-bit. This is a must for sign making. V-carve operations are where it's at for letters. Whether a straight V-carve or an advanced V-carve, that lettering look that's in your mind can be made a reality with the help of a V-bit. They come in a wide variety of angles. I find myself using the 90 degree Carbide 3D 301 the most. It provides a good looking angle without a ton of depth. I find this flexibility appealing, and additionally, I'm fond of chamfering parts for a truly professional look. 45 degree chamfers have that mid-century modern aesthetic about them. Ah, and there you might have noticed a little difference in the angles I'm talking about. 90 degrees is the overall total angle of the bit. Cutting with one side is going to yield a 45 degree cut. If you go to a 60, it's going to be a 30 degree on any one side. Common angles are 90, 60, and 30. You'll find some other ones out there. Due to the cutting dynamics of a V-bit, in some materials, you'll want to rerun a pass at full depth or perhaps set up a tiny final pass in your tool pathing to lessen the amount of post-processing or cleanup needed on your parts. Our V-bits are going to be for carving wood and some composites that cut just like wood. Rich Light is a good example of that. Speaking of which, if you want some unique materials to check out to utilize, take a look at our five materials video linked at the end of this one. Next up, a down cut bit. The majority of you who are new to the community are beginning with wood as your primary material. Down cut end mills are just for that application. With flutes that cut in a downward motion, they leave a much cleaner, sharper top edge to any feature. Quarter inch two flute number 251 is my personal choice for 95% of wood pocketing or contour cutouts. This is a wood only end mill application. Finally, I want to see you with some 3D capability. Creating 3D shapes has never been easier and planning the appropriate toolpathing is also automated and accessible. Importing STL files or creating 3D shapes from contours and imported images opens a world of creativity. In order to incorporate these show-stopping features into your next project, you'll need a ball end mill. Start with a quarter inch three flute ball. Carbide 3D offers the 202. Again, an upcut, you'll need to reduce the stock step over to 10 to 15% of its initial setting. This will produce a detailed 3D shape in woods, metals, and some composites. In this case, the standard step over of 3.175 millimeters becomes 0.3175 millimeters, or 10%. You'll see values and recommendations anywhere between 5 and 15%. Again, experience is going to be your best guide here. When combined with a 3D finishing tool path, ball end mills are excellent at producing three-dimensional shapes. You can also utilize them for some specialized circumstances such as chamfering, creating interesting textures, or creating a smooth transition at the bottom corner of pockets. Ball end mills are an arrow you want in your quiver. Those five end mills will have you prepared to get started. A, B, C is the order of the day. Always be creating. There is no substitute for experience. 
And also remember that broken end mills are part of the journey. Don't let that intimidate you. Just chuck up another and keep creating. And we'll be back here in the studio with more information, ideas, and inspiration.